So it is Friday night and my dry aged steak is resting, my strip. And with that I wanted a really good wine, but I just corved in a glass of it. And pretty sure I've had one of the vintages of this wine a long time ago. I'd have to check the vino. But what it is is, you know, Nicholas Catena Zapata's 2017 sort of their, well not sort of, their flagship wine. And this was, I did a little, did a little research. For, this wine is $100, so not cheap by any stretch. And it's a Bordeaux blend, but not sort of what I'm gonna call a classic Bordeaux blend, and I'll, I'll sort of explain it, but first vintage, 1997, this is 2017, so the, the call this the 20, 20th anniversary. I'm guessing these wines are absolutely made for the long haul. And this is a blend of 59% Cab Sauv, 33 Malbec, 8 Cab Franc. So, you know, why is that sort of a traditional Bordeaux blend? Well, prior, a long time ago in the Medoc, in the uh, right uh, left bank of Bordeaux, Malbec was as equally considered great as Cab Sauv and used typically over Merlot as the blending grape too with Cab Sauv. Now, over time, that's obviously changed. Cab Sauv dominates with Merlot being thrown in with in other Bordeaux varietals being thrown in. And on the right bank, it's Merlot dominant with Cab Franc. Malbec is really, really not seen all that much except in low percentages. I'd say 5% is the most I've seen in Bordeaux. Argentina brought back the Malbec grape in a really great way to the point where maybe it went too far and then some producers were overproducing it and all, I thought Malbecs were like the greatest one for $15 and then they just weren't and now there's some great finds of course but this I mean this is Catena this isn't your they have some less expensive bottlings of course but their good stuff is amazing stuff so I did talk about that wine from not that long ago that I'm blanking on the name right now but that was another hundred dollar bottle that was a Malbec though and it was fantastic the best Malbec I've had top two and both came from Catena so it is what it is uh, super excited to try this this is a 2017 super dark and what's also interesting and this is from so this isn't pre phylloxera vines but it is from ungrafted vines so not to get into the pre phylloxera Laos and all that information but after that Laos uh, the way that they defeated that Laos was they put American rootstock on on the Finnis vinifera grapes, the ones we know, Cap Sauv, all that, and then that the Laos did not go after the vines anymore. Anywhere in the world that has pre phylloxera Chile, some places in Spain, some places in Australia, some places in California, some old vines inns were obviously pre phylloxera But this is made from clones or selections, plantings from ungrafted. So this is like pure Cap Sauv, pure Malbec, pure Cap Franc. So, does that make a huge difference? I don't know. Uh, I did make a pretty big pour here, so the swirl is a little bit. I just been decanting. I just this is the glass I took from my about you know this is probably <laughs> too big a pour, but I wanted to enjoy this glass with my steak. So there's absolutely blackberries and black cassis. I wouldn't guess Malbec. Malbec typically gives me this blueberry, blueberry pie thing. Hmm. It smells awesome. And it smells, I know it sounds stupid, but it smells elegant. And it smells like the oak treatment's right. The ripeness of the fruit is correct. <coughs> There's a bit of, uh, there's a, a tobacco leaf. Th this actually smells like, well, Bordeaux, I guess it's supposed to be a Bordeaux out of Argentina. This smells like Bordeaux. There's a bit of like an earthy aroma and there's definitely like tobacco. But then there's a ripeness to the fruit. Blackberry pie crust. 
like a blackberry pie with, with the crust. I don't know, that's just hitting me here. Wow, that's length. Holy crap. Wow, that is an extremely long length. 13.5% alcohol. That is extremely low for, for this level of flavor. So this has a scorched earth component, which I only attribute to Bordeaux. I would think I'm drinking Bordeaux, without a doubt. But, but a ripe vintage of Bordeaux. I don't even sort of detect the Malbec as part of the blend here. What did I say? 33%. wine could age. There's great acidity. Medium plus acidity. Acidity's there. And then the tannins are there. A and this wine could age another decade. Easy. Probably 15. Maybe even 20. It's a guess, of course, but with this, between the acidity and the tannin here, this absolutely needs to be decanted longer, though. But I'm still tasting it. Th that length is insane. That's a one minute finish, if not longer. That's an insanely long finish. And, and that's what I've always said about quality wine. Sometimes the high alcohol wines might have a long length, but it's really because of the high alcohol. This is 13.5% and it's all about its structure and its body and its acidity and its tannin and its oak and everything that make it give it this really elegant long length. This is amazing. I absolutely would be thinking I'm drinking Left Bank Bordeaux. If that's what it's trying to be from Argentina, it's doing it extremely well. While still being Argentinian, of course, and having sort of a ripeness to the fruit. But it's not like... It, it's medium plus bodied to, the, to, to full. That's terrific. I can't wait to see how that evolves in the bottle and in the glass as I have it with my steak and how it pairs with it. It's going to pair amazing with the steak. That, God, it's like mouth-watering like a, like a white, a zippy Riesling, and then it's got all, but it's all this large, dominant, dark fruit flavors. It's awesome. Awesome. Five out of five, obviously, but vino, no doubt, when I check it in, so amazing. Yesterday I was drinking this. It did not get better. As the night went on, it just remained average. Um, a, uh, let's just see. After that great example, this is a Bordeaux. This is right bank, though. Oh man, this smells funny. I mean, it, it, it's just not fair. It's not fair. It, it, that wine just, it tastes terrible after that. It's probably not terrible. I had it yesterday. It wasn't terrible. I definitely don't think it was my favorite of that $20 Bordeaux finds in the 2015-2016 vintages that I was doing as like a weekday pour. No, this is, I will not buy that again. The other two are far better. But then compared to this, I mean, I guess this is what $100 wine, what does $100 wine taste like? This. What does $20 wine taste like? That's it. it it's, it's the fruit, it's the winemaking, it's the technique, it's the attention to detail. Anyway, really... Happy about this wine, not so happy about the other one, but that those things happen. Have a good night.